So I picked up these Coda lights from Costco right before the holidays. They're LED work lights, linkable shop work lights, and they're uh, they're really nice. I paid twenty dollars. They were on sale. They were twenty dollars instead. I think normally forty. Um, I have an issue with interfering five gigahertz Wi-Fi, and I really like the lights and they're a good price. I like the output. I like the color temperature, and I like that they're dimmable. A lot of the ones on Amazon I was looking at weren't dimmable, and these were. So I bought a couple of them from the garage, and I'm down here in my basement painting my son's crib. Um, so I have two of them set up right here now. So I figured I'd make a quick video about the little mod that I drew to them. And it's to fix the issue that they have with 5 gigahertz and interference. And it's really just the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. It comes in the two of the boxes came with a little notice saying if you're having issues with the Wi-Fi, you're supposed to switch channels on your router, um, which I did. The issue was when I flew my DJI Mavic Mini, my mini drone, uh, that operates on five gigahertz Wi-Fi, and I couldn't fly it pretty much anywhere around the house without having issues until I turned the light, all these Coda lights off. Once I turn all these Coda lights, then it works fine. Um, so I'll show you the little, process that I go through and this box does not have the warning I'll, have to, I'll put a picture up of the little notice that it's in. but basically we'll pop these off You gotta be careful, these screws just kind of go into like this. This is all plastic. There's almost no metal in this. Um, this is hard plastic and the screws go into that. Don't strip them out. Just be careful with it and slow. Pop them off. And we'll pull the top off. And you can see it's just, this piece of aluminum has the two LED strips strip lights in it and that just slides into this plastic this is all plastic housing and then it has this frosted plastic uh, so what you'll do is just pull the end off there and then I usually pull this end off as well makes it getting off the uh, getting it out of the makes getting it to slide out easier if you have both sides off the first time. So this is the linkable side. You'll notice on the plug here, there's a there's a wide, like your wall, wall outlets have the wide slot and then the, the thin one. So when you pull these off on the back here, the wiring, the white goes on the wide one Actually, one of these uh, I took apart. Actually, the first one I did, uh, these these weren't even connected. It was kind of strange. Like, they were just tucked in down here into the frame. And I pulled this off, and I'm like, uh, you know, makes you wonder. Anyways, uh, so let's pull this off, and let's set that aside. So the piece of aluminum comes in here. And I'll show a picture, maybe like right here and right here. They bend the aluminum frame out just a little bit and that's what contacts this plastic and doesn't let it, you can't really like easily slide it out. Like you can see, I can push. Oh, this one slid out. But what I did previous ones is you just grab the corner and just bend this out a little bit or squeeze like that and twist this and you can pop that channel out just heard it snap back in but this one actually let me slide it out okay that's easier so slide it out set that aside so don't scratch it up so this is your led light be careful on this end it's the power in is that loose it looks like no all right what you do is you pop this little white cover off and there is the motion and remote control sensor board Bringing it in a little bit closer here. Right there. That's the motion 
On this side, you can see the motion, and uh, that's that's an infrared receiver for the remote control. And this is a light sensor. Uh, so later on, I'll show you. I'll, I'll, I'll mention that uh, the light sensor should still work. So the adjustment for how bright it is outside that should all still work because it's got the sensor. And um, all you do is you unplug here on the base. Watch out! Don't touch any of this stuff, obviously. But you just pull this little connector off here, and then the little board just lifts out. And there you go. Nice and easy. So we'll set this aside. And I'll bring you in a little closer here. Uh, I'll show you this before I before I cut and bring you in closer. I'll show you. So here's this is the microwave antenna. And it's just kind of like sitting on top of the board. It's just got these three little pins. So all you have to do is heat these up with a soldering iron and pull this board off. And you'll have the board, just not that antenna. And that's really what, this operates at like the 5,300 megahertz range. So that's what kills your 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi is that. And that's just for motion sensing, which I don't really care about. So let's get to soldering. So this is fixing that CODA board. Slide around here. So what I do normally, I'm not a... I'm not the best at soldering. I just have an old Radio Shack soldering iron, but it works for this project. So what I always do is I always put a little extra fresh solder on there on each of the three pins. Actually, this one's got better. The last two I did earlier, it was hard to melt the solder. Maybe just my iron was cold but what I do is I take these little tweezers and I put them I can't even get it under there yet can't get it under there yet so what I'll do is I'll just slap one slap it on and try and move these pins so I'm heating up the solder and as soon as the solder heats up you can usually pull it and move it down just a little bit oh yeah it's nice and hot actually so there you go it's already starting to pull back you can see Starting to pull back a little bit. So all you do is you heat up these three solder points and then basically just pull this. Okay, I'm on autofocus. Come on. So all you do is you heat up these three contacts with your soldering iron and then you just pull this microwave antenna off. And that's what that's the game. That's the goal plan. Let's go. There we go. So I got it off. We'll set that aside. And now it looks crappy. But you just gotta make sure you get all three of those separated. You don't want them touching obviously. So that's where a little solder sucker comes in. I have found if I clip on there. this go from the back wait till it's all hot and there we go let's do the second one I need some helping hands and helping hands would make it easier the second one's clean and let's do the third one third one I got to do again the third one I think was the one that I, I had too much I put too much solder on there we go and I'm just gonna make sure that those aren't touching right there make sure they're not touching nope. good 
good, good, good. All right, now all you do, so once you have that chip off again, that was just the motion sensing for the, I'm sorry, the microwave antenna for the motion sensing. I don't know why they use microwave in this one. It's, to me, it's way too aggressive for the garage. I guess it, in the FCC filing, I was reading up on it. They said it was because uh, for, for sensing like really far, you can adjust like how sensitive you want, whether you want it like real sensitive or high sensitive, low sensitive. So they did it. They used the microwave antenna just so it could be super sensitive to uh, detecting motion, which for me in my garage, in my use case, I don't need. So I'll go ahead and swap you back and finish it up. All right, so I just pulled that antenna off. So now all you have to do is basically put this guy back together. So it doesn't have the motion sense anymore, but same procedure, you just kind of push that in. This is just a little white cover that clips in over that board. And then plug in this little three pin connector on the board. And what I like to do is, I always like to test this stuff to make sure turns on before I put it back up there so I'll unplug my solder in the iron and blind myself hey there we go make sure it dims goes full bright turns off yep I turned off all of them of course but, so I keep one of these right by my garage door in case any of the motion stuff gets reset I can just real quick turn off the motion sensing so I'll bring this in, show you. This is what I was talking about with the, where they bend the metal aluminum frame in two spots and then down here in two spots. So all they do is they bend that just so it makes contact with the plastic case. But it's a decent light. I haven't found it to flicker too bad on camera. So that's always a benefit. It's always a plus. All you do is you make sure the LEDs are pointing down, obviously, and then just slide it back into its case. That one looks a little tricky sometimes. putting it back and it gets stuck on this heat sink right here it might do it now uh, one of them got stuck on that heat sink you just grab inside this channel like where the mounts for it go you just grab those and pull that out a little bit and you can slide the slide it past the heat sink and then the only other thing is the ends you got to make sure inside this cap here there's a little channel make sure that channel seats properly all the way around even if it looks like it's put on properly Make sure, there we go. And where's my screws? I'll put these back in. Make sure you don't over tighten these. Like I said, it's just a plastic, little plastic body. It's not even really a, it doesn't have much to bite into. So just barely tighten them. And for the end cap, end cap, again, you have two, you have the wider section and the narrower. So the wider one goes on white. White cable goes on the wide one. And the black cable goes on the narrow one. One of, uh, I said one of them, this end cap wasn't even plugged in. And then on the second one, the, the black cable, I had to tighten the butt connector because it was so loose, it was like real loosey, sliding off. So I don't know, the quality seems uh, questionable, but 
they've been doing pretty good since I put them up. I have five in the garage, and right now I have two down here. And this one will probably go over by my water heater and uh, HVAC unit over there. Just so I can actually see down here a little bit. Pop the screws back in. As long as you have a soldering iron, it's really not, it's not a hard job. If you don't care about the motion sensing like I don't, then it works out to be a cheap, good looking light with a good output. I'll just plug it in to make sure everything still works. I will be on finishing my son's crib. You can see there. We'll turn them in night. You can see they all dim night. Turn off, turn back on, full brightness. So, again, the only thing, every time uh, when I first turn them on for the very first time after I do this mod, uh, I disable all the timing stuff. I'll show you the timing. Like the, I'll do dim 30 seconds, turn off 30 seconds. Um, and you'll see, we'll just let it sit here for a second while I clean up. You'll see they, they have no motion sensor now, so they're going to turn off after 30 seconds no matter what. And they won't turn back on until you either power cycle them or you use the remote to turn them back on. So if you rely on the motion, I wouldn't do this mod, but most likely you're probably not watching this. Well, you might be, I guess. Because it is, you see, they just dimmed. So there's no motion. So they'll turn off here in just 30 seconds after they dim 30 seconds they'll turn off and then I'd be interested to see if maybe I'll have to look up a spec sheet and see what kind of signals it pushes through here it is possible with modulation so depending on what kind of signal it pushes I might put a motion sensor I, I really could care less about the motion though it should turn off here yeah there they go so the light behind the camera didn't get the signal, but you can see like motion doesn't work, obviously. But you can still full brightness, turn them on. Full brightness and they still work. It's a good little light. Hope that helped. If you if it helped you hit the like button. Mm, that's about it.